Hello everyone, welcome back. So in our IPM series today we are going to look into another way of executing the test cases into the browser stack. If you remember we had a discussion in our previous session that there are two ways to execute the test cases into the browser stack. The first one is the legacy way which uses the browser stack options and integrate that with the UI automator 2 options. As you can see here actually we have integrated that and the other way also with the execute test also you can integrate that by taking the browser stack options now there is another way which we had a quick discussion that using browser stack sdk now today we will get into the extensive discussion into the browser stack sdk why browser stack has given this particular feature and what are the different benefits that you can get it if you want to take this approach okay so there are a couple of prerequisites or the configurations that you need to do to make sure that your test cases will be running via your browser stack sdk okay so for this the first step is that you have to install the browser stack sdk into the intellij that is the first step okay and after that you have to go into the a yaml file you need to create it and that yaml file will have couple of details now which is basically replacing your browser stack options and ui automator or execute test options means you don't need to mention anything into this particular capabilities that you are indirectly taking it into the yaml file so that is the second step the third step is that you need to actually install this particular maven dependency browser stack java sdk that you need to do that so three steps one is actually the plugin let's quickly look into the plugin now because we are looking into the eclipse i will go into the eclipse preferences or the settings okay and after that actually you have to go to the plugins you can see there is one option okay and then you have to search for browser stack and you can see that it is already installed for me so that's why it is coming as uh, installed or uh, disable option but for you it would be like install you click on that install and apply it it would be installing it's that straightforward here that's it that is the first step now the second step it says that you have to go and create a new browser stack yaml file so what i'm going to do i'll create a new into the under this project folder only or the directory i'll click on file and here I will say browser stack dot yaml yml okay so this yaml file will have couple of capabilities now there is a kind of uh, the specifications that they are giving you have to follow that format and then you can add the details okay I'll discuss into that but let's go into the maven dependency so you have to go for browser java browser stack java sdk so as I looked into, I think you won't get it into the Maven dependency if you search it directly. Let me see that. So if you go inside this, oh, okay, so there is a Java SDK. So you can come back here and you can look into this. You can see com.browserStack, browserStack SDK. So let me copy paste it into the Maven. Even if you are using Gradle, you can use the Gradle dependency as well. So let me come back to the pom.xml and under this Java SDK or Selenium Java, I can put it now instead of 113.17, there is another way you can also give this latest as well. Okay, that way also you can install that. So let me click on this Maven refresh and we should install the dependency. So one is browser stack plugin and this browser stack Java SDK dependency so two things are done now we will be focusing into this plugin actually which i have sorry the uh, yaml file that i was talking now there is a nice documentation for this let me open this link and you can see that so this is the browser stack yaml file link here couple of details are there let me quickly go into them one by one okay so the first thing is that you have to give the username and password like how we were giving into our code right if you see here we were giving the browser stack options into this uh, let's go to this actually here you can see username and password the same thing now here we need to give framework actually what kind of framework you are using like the unit test framework is it a test ng cucumber or cucumber test ng what kind of framework you are using 
okay i believe this is optional but you can add it for more verbosity and then after that you need to give parallels per platform actually now what is this uh, if you see that there are actually you have to specify the platform here you can see the like this is platforms and then there is another platforms so what it is doing this platforms section accepts multiple platform means multiple devices see think about an issue with your this classic legacy approach you are only giving one particular device only right sorry here you are giving one real device only for android and one real device for android ios think about you want to run your test cases into multiple android devices you can't really do it here right what you need to do you have to go into a test ng xml file you have to create one test ng xml file in that xml file you need to after that you need to specify all the details like multiple test ng parameters you need to pass it and then you have to execute your test cases even in selenium also we have looked into where you can do cross browser testing parallelly right so that is one limitation you have to configure yourself but in case of this browser stack is dk right or this yaml file you don't need to really worry about that so you can specify multiple real device details here and browser stack will take care of that if you are specifying two devices let's say that and you are giving the parallels per platform as one now what it would do that it would execute these two platforms side by side actually so simultaneously it will be executing on this two different devices we are giving parallels per platform as two it means that two samsung galaxy devices you will be getting two google pixel 7 pro devices you will be getting so a total of four devices for the android a total of four devices for the ios will be spun up to execute your test cases in parallel actually so that is how it is determined but there is a restriction though so it depends on what is the license that you are taking now whenever you are purchasing a license right if you go to the app automate okay let me quickly go into that so okay it's uh, okay if you go to the pricing plans and pricing right it would give you like how many parallel licenses you are taking is it two is it three like if you see that app automate you can see one parallel test it means that you will be getting one i think one parallel test means you have only one device actually you can see parallel test indicate number of automated test that can be run simultaneously it means that you have only one number of device but if you are taking two it means that two devices at one time you can spawn up it means that whenever you are going here right now if you have purchased two parallel devices let's say that as license and you are running in four different devices it won't run four devices in parallel probably what it would do is that it would first run these two particular android devices in parallel after that once it is finished after that it will be executing the next and after that you need to give uh, pass the app url actually like how we used to give set app right here the same thing you have to give the app actually so either you can give the browser stack string or the custom id we have already discussed or you can give the shareable id if you in your organization standpoint you are giving or local path also if you are uh, taking the path from your local device these are or actually you don't need to specify all these things at one time any one of these you need to give it and if you go here now these are all specific to the browser stack project we have already discussed how to pass these parameters so that you can look into the build numbers so history will be retained there and certain browser stack configurations like local equal to true if you are taking the local network connection local options there are a couple of proxy or firewall settings you can do it appium version so we have already looked into this in previous session uh, you can see that uh, your browser stack option we have taken right so same thing you can specify here except insecure certificates this is basically if you are taking any kind of alerts or auto accept you can do that uh, again proxies and these are your debugging options you want to take the video recording you want to take the device records and all these things you can 
pull it there actually and couple of other options like local language geolocation automation name you can give i think this is optional at this moment and uh, yeah i think pretty much those kind of things that you need to specify it's basically like if you would have seen in our previous session the capabilities right the same capabilities you can specify here the only difference is that you can have multiple platforms and you can run that parallelly so that you don't need to run your own setup to run these test cases in parallel okay so now let's get into this browser stack.yaml file and let me copy paste all these things and whatever it is required i'll take it others i can remove it so you have to ensure that all these things are in a proper what do you call formats actually here so that it can run your test cases properly so you can see platforms i'm taking only ios and here okay there are two ios platforms it is taking right iphone 14 pro max iphone xs iphone 11 let me only take for two actually at this moment so i will remove this and you will have and this has to be in least format so you have to respect the format because your yamls are very sensitive to the uh, annotations here whatever you are taking you can see this determines a least actually here so the same thing we need to take so if you are coming into these platforms you have to come back here okay it's already there and you have to go like this and i want to run parallels per platform means it will be executing on two devices in parallel actually there you can see the format one tab and then one uh, hyphen and after that one space and then in that order you need to respect all other things actually here this is not required you can remove it and now let's see what is the error invalid child element in a block mapping so i think it says that you have to specify here okay so the browser stack yaml file is ready and now let's come back to this particular uh, app factory to change a little bit here so because we have given all the details here we don't need to really have all these options here it means that i can comment this section actually here so you can simply comment from here to here because all all the capabilities are mentioned in that particular yaml file and here actually i can simply comment from here and then here and you have to ensure that the yaml file will be updated properly for you and then yes pretty much everything is done and i think we should be good and you have to specify this a half and don't worry about that these options will become null see at this moment you also don't require this particular option see now we were calling that particular this particular browser stack options get browser stack even this is also not required this is only required when you are executing the legacy way you just with a null value also you can put it because what browser stack will do after while it is executing this line of code right these options will be fetched from this yaml file and that is what exactly the browser stack plugin what we installed right that will ensure that they will read this particular uh, configuration and put it into this particular option okay you have to also remove the particular appium server running because browser stack will be taking care of that okay perfect now let's get into the login test and execute this if everything goes fine it will execute the test cases in parallel now i have only one test case here right so let me do one thing actually here why not we can do two different test cases running here so i'll just take this into two test cases let's say okay okay and one more test change we need to do because i'm giving the particular ios right there so it should run into the ios one because if you see this browser stack yaml contains ios devices right so let's configure that ios so that it would call this xquit test one okay 
So now let's get into the login test and run this test. So I see the issue is here actually if you see that the formatting is not correctly set here because after the colon you need to put a space so that it would be properly readable from the browser stack plugin that you have used it. Now let's try to run this particular test case and see if it is working fine or not. I don't want to debug simply run this particular test and come back to this browser stack and try to observe that come back to the dashboard yes you can see that one of five and two of five it means that both the test cases are running in parallel you can see that all sessions total of two sessions that it is running now together and just wait for a second okay so it is validating one is login test another is invalid login test and you can see the first test case got passed so I think the valid login got passed actually the invalid takes some time because it looks into the errors right after the login so that is why maybe it is taking some time and here if you go to this now this is again another device actually iPhone 14 Pro Max the second device that we chose right here if you come back to here so this is the first one and this is the second one here so as you can see that uh, the test case is got passed for the first device that is iPhone XS and iPhone 14 Pro Max uh, both the test cases and if you go inside this you can see different logs that it is giving here whatever the data it input there and then the total process there and if you play it now it will give the proper username and password and it locks in so two test cases run on the first device and also the other two test cases also run into the second device as well so the same thing that you can deal with it okay so that is how actually you can execute and it doesn't matter whether you are using the android or ios same test cases will be running the only thing that you need to change is that uh, you need to change the platform name to android and the android devices see there is one thing that you can do here if you come back to this dashboard right you can use this intellij id and you can set up actually if you are choosing android you can see all the devices that is present for android all these things and you can choose whatever you need and here also it is giving you a particular browser stack yaml file which you can copy paste into this there are a lot of ways one is actually directly on this platform only you can use the browser stack yaml file or you can go to the capabilities section if you remember in our previous session we have looked into that I have that link handy let me look into that so let's come down yes this one so you can see this way also you can get all the details if you scroll down you can see all the key value pairs it is giving here so that is how you can utilize this particular browser stack SDK and follow a couple of steps and then you can run the test cases in parallel okay hope this particular session is a helpful so that's pretty much it for today hope this particular session is a helpful to you we will be seeing some more interesting topics in our upcoming sessions so stay tuned and do subscribe to this youtube channel thank you for watching